a little bit like this. First half, we will jump right into some teaching, kind of like sermonette, TED talk, kind of a feel, kind of an idea on these topics that I hope are interesting to you, that I hope are encouraging to you. And then we will go into life groups where we will get to dialogue and have conversations about these topics, all right? And so this series, just so you know, if you're like, I, my friend just brought me, I have no idea why I'm here. It's all our romantic relationships, okay? Here's what I want to start. Here's what I want to set us up, okay? I'm not going to tell you if you should date or not. So if you came for like, hmm, I'm ready, tell me. That's not it. That's not what I'm here to do. That's between actually you and your parents. You're like, hmm. nope, I'm telling you right now, at the end of the day, I'm going to stay wherever your parents want to stand. You do you. You guys have those conversations. You guys make those decisions. My hope is to just give you information, is to offer you information, and you be the judge. You make decisions, you make calls, you bring those into the conversations with your families and with your parents. My hope is to give you tools and ideas, and, and like I said, that you can take them from there. Now, it'll come in four ways, all this information. The first one is this. I will start with some, some a, a talk for you. It will begin there, but it doesn't end there. In a couple weeks, we're gonna have a whole panel of people up here answering literally any question that you throw at us. Oh, dang. Yep, we wanna filter through those and have those conversations, small groups, and last but not least, my hope would be if you have a positive or encouraging relationship with your parents, that you would have these, some of these conversations with your parents. Hey, I learned this. Hey, I talked about this. Hey, what do you think about that? Um, hopefully you represent me well. If not, I'm being recorded. So, uh, you know, I got you. I got information right here for you, right? Mom, Arnold said that I could date whoever I want right now. No, nope, that's not true, Mom. Look at me, that's not true. Okay, so I'll also start with a warning. Try and have an open mind. We're going to cover an array of subjects, okay? The truth is that all this information will not have a chance against your reality if you don't have an open mind and a heart, okay? Have a hunger for truth and discussion. Don't just try and debunk whatever is being said on stage right off the bat because of your reality or your feelings or what you're going through right now. Yes, those are important things. And my hope is that we can help navigate those alongside with you. But if you're not careful, you may find yourself getting stuck in your reality and not being able to be teachable. So I just want to encourage you right off the, of that, the, the bat on there. So take a deep breath. Ready? Uh, and know that God is on the throne, <laughs> and it's going to be all right, and let's just have some fun and jump into this. Fair? Yeah. All right. So, this series, why? Why do we want to talk about this? Why is it important to even talk about dating in the spiritual space, in the spiritual world? Well, this is why I think it's important to tackle this and to talk about this, okay? Every day, your generation attempts to walk into a world, a world of the unknown. A world where culture tells you, just try it <clears throat> to find out. A world that can be full of promise, excitement, warmth, butterflies, and maybe even love. A world where we seldom get told what can happen or are really given instruction on what's on the line. I'm talking about the world of romantic relationships dating, and all that comes with that subject. We believe that while dating and relationships sound like a fun and cool idea, without the proper information or preparation, 
You could just be dating in the dark, dating in the unknown, just figure it out, just wandering around trying to figure it out. And in the meantime, hurting yourself and others along the way. We will be mostly focusing on unpacking those romantic relationships, that romantic relationship world. We'll dive a lot deeper into that, especially next Wednesday. Like I said, the topics are endless. Some will come up during these talks, some will come up in your small group, maybe during one-on-ones. Let's just dive in. So here's, um, here's where I wanna start. So if you're titling this, you can call it this, waffles versus spaghetti. Yay! Let's have some fun. The difference between guys and girls and how we are wired. That's where I'd like to begin. I want to start with who the heck, what did God intend? How did he wire me as a guy? How did he wire me as a woman? Especially when I go into a relationship. See, God created us, man and women, with certain, these are, these are key words, certain tendencies, certain pools and roles. At the very foundation of who we are as male and female, you will find essence of what I'm talking about in most women and most men. When it's all broken down, that's what you will find. Now, some of these truths can overlap. Let me say that again before you freak out at the things that I lean in and I, and I say. Some of these, th these things absolutely overlap between sexes and depending on culture and the atmosphere you were raised in, you may think the opposite of what I'm saying. That still does not make what I'm going to present to you untrue, okay? You may feel tension, that's okay. And, 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 and I wanna encourage you, that's fine. But just hear me out as we walk through it. And if you need clarity, I'm always down to have discussion and have a conversation with you. My hope and my prayer for you is that you will lean in with curiosity. Let's just learn, okay? All right, so I wanna start with this. A few years back, a lot of years back, my oldest, he was four years old. We're at the playground, and uh, I'm watching him with a bunch, of, a bunch of kids playing around, they're playing tag, a bunch of little boys are playing tag, they're running around, you know, they're making up this, this is a jungle and a castle, and they're doing all these things, and all of a sudden, what happens usually happens, and that's this, the floor is now locked. Oh. Amen. 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 And now they're jumping from one thing to the other, and we can't touch that. Oh my gosh, you're gonna burn alive! And they're hearing them all these things. They're like four or five years old. I'm like, oh, intense. On the other side of the playground is a group of little girls and a couple boys there too. Right? And all of a sudden, here's what's happening. Um, one of the girls steps in front of everybody and says, "Okay, we are all now married." <laughs> And I'm watching this happen, right? And uh, because of that, we can hug each other and we can kiss each other. And you, buddy, can kiss him because you guys are on, uh, our brother, brothers, so that's okay. And then all of a sudden, it's like following the leader breaks down, right? One girl's leading and everybody's following. They're just kind of going through the jungle gym and doing their thing. And there's more hugging and there's more kissing. I'm like, what the heck is going on right now? I'm like, Noah, let's go. <laughs> Pardon me, right? This is just a basic, basic, simple reminder of how different we can think as male and female. And who knows, for some of you girls in the story that I just told, you're like, you kidding me? I, I was getting married on top of hot lava, you know? Whatever, I don't know your story, you do you, right? And that's fine. But we still, at the very core, have specific tendencies. And that's what I wanna unpack. Genesis, chapter one. Verse 26 through 27 it says this. At the very beginning of history, God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Again, Genesis 1, 26 through 27. Here is God creating man, and then out of and then outdoing himself, in my opinion, he creates women. Both equal, yet greatly unique at the same time. Also wonderfully balanced in the eyes of God. Genesis 2.18 says, God allowed for Adam to look upon creation and realize 
There is no one for me. There is no one like me. There is no one that balances me. He allowed for Adam to long for someone that would be suitable partner for him. Then God brings him Eve and performs the first wedding. I can only imagine Adam just jaw dropped seeing Eve, perfect creature created in the image of God for the first time. Whoa, come on. Good for you, Adam. <laughs> Today, I want us to look at just some general ways that God has wired girls and how God has wired guys. Because at times, I don't think we realize that when we are dating another person, God created them differently. But I don't think that, I don't know if that comes to mind sometimes. And half the time, we are just trying to figure something out. Why are they the way that they are? Right? You find, if you're dating, you find yourself, you haven't, or you've dated in the past, and you find yourself asking those questions, why are they the way that they are? Why can't I figure them out? What, like, what, all these questions, I'm about to hopefully give you some answers, okay? I want to celebrate what God has done. I want us to celebrate each other for what God created. And I want to make a call to respect each other on a greater level. Here's a quote. It was in God's plan to make men and women different from each other from the moment he imagined us. The original plan was to use these differences as a starting point for building intimate, fulfilling relationships. But in our sin-filled world, what started out as an advantage has become a frequent source of frustration. And if you've ever been in a relationship, I know you can say a little bit of amen when it comes to that. Sadly, we have taken these beautiful things that the Lord has created and fractured them. No judgment there. No shame there. It's based on our flesh, sinful nature, our culture, our world. There's, been, there's fractures in these things that I'm about to show to you. What has been produced on the other end in our culture is brutal. It's heartbreaking. So here's my first tip in the dating space. Guys, if you can't even understand a girl on a basic level or will attempt to respect those differences, you really need to consider if you should be dating. Girls, if you can't understand a guy and how God wired them on a basic level, or will attempt to respect those differences, you really need to consider if you should be here. Here's what I mean by differences. How were you designed as a guy and as a girl? Some of you go, I don't need that education. I got that in kindergarten. <laughs> right? Anybody ever watch Kindergarten Cop? Yeah. Okay, three people. <laughs> I know, I'm old. In that, in that uh, movie, there's a little boy in kindergarten who stands up and looks at Arnold Schwarzenegger when he shows up to the classroom the first time and says this, girls, or boys have a penis and girls have a vagina. And then he sits down. <laughs> Some of us, that's all we know about the differences between guys and girls. So that's not the only thing I'm talking about. I'm, I want to get in the mind. All right, beyond the physical stuff. All right, let's start with the boys. Ready? Yeah. Boys, you are what we call waffle-minded. Yeah. Wow, they're already excited. Okay, waffle-minded, right? Okay? Here's what I mean by that. It's one thing at a time with you, all right? One thing at a time with you is your mindset. For example, okay, think about waffles. I love waffles, I don't know about you, but when I eat waffles, you see all the squares? Does anybody fill every square with syrup before you eat it? Those are my people, right? Those of you who just drizzle around, what's wrong with you? For me, it's every single block, right? Listen up. When we say that men are like waffles, we don't mean that men waffle <laughs> on all decisions and are generally unstable. That's not what I'm saying. What we mean is that men process life in boxes. 
okay? If you look at a waffle, you see a collection of boxes, all separated from each other. That makes convenient holding spaces like my spirit. That is typically how men process life. Their thinking is divided into boxes that have room for one issue and one issue only. The first issue of life goes in the first box. The second issue of life goes in the second box and so on. The typical man lives in one box at a time and one box only, okay? When a man is at work, where are they? At work. At work. Thank you. You learn. When he's at he's at his sport, he's he's doing the sport thing, right? If he's in the garage, he's doing the garage. If he's watching TV, he's watching TV. Have you ever seen a guy watch TV and zone out? Yeah, that's the TV box. Okay. Or how about this, girls? Guys, I'm gonna help you out here. Have you ever? Maybe if you're dating or you're interested in a guy or you're on a date and you're sitting across a guy. And you look at him, he's kind of looking into nothingness, right? And you're thinking, I wonder what he's thinking about. Maybe he's thinking about me and how beautiful I look. Maybe he's thinking about what we're going to do next. Or maybe the next day, maybe he's planning out our next day. And then you say, hey, what are you thinking about, babe? And he looks at you and he says, nothing. <laughs> there is. A nothing box. <laughs> Ladies, understand, there is a nothing box. Guys can think about nothing. That is a real thing. So don't take it personal. When they look at you and you're like, no, they're like nothing, you're like, what do you mean you didn't think? You weren't thinking about me, you weren't thinking about this date. What are you talking about nothing? There is a nothing box. Write that down in your notes. <laughs> Scientists call this idea compartmentalizing. That is putting life and responsibilities into different compartments. Here's what happens as a result. Men are problem solvers by nature. They enter a box, size up the problem, and formulate a solution. That's how our minds work. In their careers, they consider what it will take to be successful and focus on it. It's why a lot of times guys become obsessive with their work. You tell them to conquer that hill and you convince them enough, they will conquer that hill because they will focus on it. That's how we're wired. In communication, they look for the bottom line and get there as quickly as possible, okay? In decision making, they look for an approach they can buy into and apply it as often as possible. The bottom line with men is this. Men feel best about themselves when they are solving problems. Therefore, they spend most of their time doing what they are best at while they attempt to ignore the things that cause them to feel deficient, AKA why they play a lot of video games. <laughs> oh, I'm good at it, so I'm gonna keep going there. Guys, can I get an amen? Amen. amen. All right. Number two, usually men are the stronger sex physically. Relax, ladies. <laughs> this is important because naturally a man wants to protect, defend, and being the stronger species generally puts that responsibility upon us. We actually like that. Sadly, these are some ways that that's been fractured by abuse of that strength, by abuse of that power. Sadly, men in history have used it to dominate women instead or it's been fractured by emasculation, which means to deprive of strength or weaken. This has happened to us as men by society, culture, home, like a mom or a dad or both, by a girlfriend. So we start believing this idea that we're not strong enough. Or how about this? Guys do it to each other, right? Like always flexing them in front of one another. Do you even lift, bro? Like, you can't lift that? Right? Like we, we challenge each other, right? But this is the way. But instead, my hope and, and the way I believe is this. I would say, guys, when you are in a room, women should feel the safest because of that strength. And yet that's not the case most of the time. They should feel the safest, not scared or less than. That's a fractured side of this beautiful gift that God has built in us. 
Number three, men are very visual. They have a fast sexual drive. Write that down. <laughs> Guys are like a light switch or a microwave. They're ready, air on, sexual drive, ready to go. Women are more like a dimmer switch or a crock pot. <laughs> it just takes time. It just takes time. Here's how this has been fractured for men. I told you, got lost a little bit. For men, sadly, because of this beautiful thing that God has built in us, that one day, I'm going to talk about this a few weeks from now, this beautiful gift that God has given you to have a fast sex drive, um, has been fractured in our culture because now it's used against us in something called pornography. Sex sells, right? That's all over the place. Commercials, right? Social media. I mean, even video games. I have to look at these video games that my kids are playing. I'm like, what is happening here, right? It's like, yeah, dad, I just kind of skip that and get to the shooting part. I'm like, oh, I don't know if that was much better, but <laughs> you know, so that's, that's another idea to know. Number four, want, again, this is like our go-to. You want to be the leader, the protector, and the brave one. We actually lean into that. We love that. We want to be a part of that. We want to be considered those things at the core of who we are. Sadly, again, we still lead, but we lead, we lead with fear, hurt, ridicule, obsession, sadly, unhealthy control. We're not the protector. In fact, sometimes we've turned into the dictator. We as men, at times, have taken advantage of the scriptures that say, you know, that we will, um, that we are over a woman to protect and to care for her. And we took it and see, 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 we take verses out of context and we say, see, even the Bible says that I'm over you. Wait, what? That's not it. <laughs> That's not it at all. That's some bad theology. But we use it to, to you know, um, be over women. And I'm going to talk about why a little later. So guess what? No wonder women have nothing to do with us sometimes. But that this is this is some of the fractured parts of this. Another thing we 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 tend to to want to lean toward or bend toward as men is this: we want to be respected. We want to be respected. The Bible says, "Respect your husbands." In Ephesians five one and First Peter three, this it holds it at a high standard. Once again, just so you don't get lost, ladies, this does not mean that you don't want to be respected. Okay, all I'm saying is for men, this is a stronger lean. We'll get to you in a second, relax. <laughs> I'm having way too much fun. Men, here's the problem though. We can lean toward being passive instead. So we want respect, but passivity is what we lean toward instead, especially if we feel threatened, or we feel like we're gonna fail, or someone's just gonna do it for me. <laughs> This is why we see a lot of adolescents being pushed back into the late 20s, early 30s. And why you're finding more and more men today in their 30s living with their mom in their basement. Because of this passiveness. Or how about this? This is another way that it's fractured. Instead of earning respect or living in such a way where respect is, is given to us because of how we're living out, we demand it. We demand respect instead and don't usually work for it or work to earn it. Sometimes we do this by status, right? I'm the boss. I'm the leader. Sometimes we do this physically. The way we stand around people, the way we tower over people or belittling other people, the way we talk about people, the way we talk about women, belittle them so that we can feel superior or respected. Or how about this sometimes, guys, because of this, the fracture side of this, the sinful side of this, we start cornering a girl into doing something they don't want to do. That's another way of dominating. That's another way of, look, I have respect because I tower over this situation. Or guys start thinking that they have respect because of what they've accomplished 
with girls, what they've accomplished with women, and they want to show off in front of the other guys because the guys are so excited about whatever it is that you thought that you conquered. And so you're getting respect from your friends and your homies, and you think, I'm good, look at the respect I get. Yet we've belittled and we've hurt and disrespected women to get there. The last one is this. We tend, we have a tendency to want to actually be hard workers because we want to accomplish something, right? Remember that whole square? Like we focus on that one thing, we want to get that one thing, we want to accomplish that one thing. Again, let me, it's a simple example where we go back to the, the stinking video games. <laughs> we accomplish a mission. I literally sometimes just messing around go upstairs to play some video games, and my wife's like, where are you going? I'm gonna go save the world. Yeah. <laughs> so dumb. But, <laughs> in 30 minutes, oh I can watch the news and be depressed, or I can go save the world. Yeah. I'm in, yeah. right? Let me go do that thing. At least in my imagination and in my mind, right? I'm gonna go work hard, right? So, but again, what leans in because of our brokenness and, 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 and the culture and, and our flesh is, again, being passive and lazy. I'll just let mom do it. I'll just let my girl pay for that. I'll just go find me a sugar mama. <laughs> think I'm kidding. But there's real people out there that that's, how they, that's what they believe. I'm not going to work hard. I'm just going to find somebody who has what I need and they'll provide it for me, okay? If you look at all these things I just gave you, guys, I mean, look at them for a second. The physical side of things, the wanting to lead, the wanting to protect, the wanting to be the brave one, the wanting to have respect, the wanting to work hard and accomplish something, being focused on those things. I don't know about you, but man, I hope I could be half of that kind of guy. But these are the things that God wired within us to pursue those things. And it's okay to go after those things. They're beautiful things. But again, we live in a broken, broken, decaying, selfish, sinful world. Sadly, we lean a lot of the times to the opposite of those things. And we didn't have good examples and role models to show us what those things look like. We default to the easy. All right, ladies. It's time. No! <laughs> Ladies, you are spaghetti minded. Yeah! Spaghetti minded. You're like, what? He's yes. ready. Spaghetti minded. Everything connects with everything else. Everything affects everything else. If you attempt to follow one noodle around the plate of spaghetti, <laughs> you would intersect a lot of other noodles, right? and you might even seamlessly switch to another noodle. That is how women face life. Every thought and issue is connected to every other thought and issue in some way. Life is much more, it's important, of a process for women than it is for men. This is why women are typically better at multitasking than men. It's just how it is, guys. Sorry. It's why on a typical, uh, it's why on a, on typical, these girls can do their math homework while FaceTiming with a friend, uh, doing their nails, and watching Netflix, while listening to their favorite band in the background without skipping a beat. That's just Tuesday, guys. All right? Because all her thoughts, emotions, and convictions are connected. She is able to process more information and keep track of more activities. Relax, guys. I'm saying general, <laughs> okay? You're like, wait, but I can do all those things. Relax. I'm just saying generally how they're wired. It's also why we don't stand a chance at times, guys, because everything is connected to everything else. We are constantly walking into some potential death traps. <laughs> and here's what I mean. Here's an example. She wakes up with a zit. She feels bloated and didn't fit into her jeans the way she wanted. An assignment for class is incomplete. Once she arrives at school, 
A girl didn't look at her the right way. Her best friend is not available to talk about it at the time. Her latte is now not warm enough. The weather is jacking up her hair. She's running late. And here you come. Oh, little mouse. You have no idea what you're walking into. Because you show up, you're walking into a death trap that you have no clue about, oh little mouse. Minding your own business. And you say, hey. <laughs> or you say, what's up? <laughs> or you say, how's it going? You have no idea what you just said. Just, no way. Because all of a sudden, she's upset. Or walks away. Or worse, starts crying. <laughs> to you, you were in your hello box. But to her, everything that happened that morning is connected to everything else. Even to your comment. It's not just that moment. Girls? Yeah. Yeah. Just saying. But this is important, men, to understand. Write that down. You need to go back and watch the tape. Write it down again. Oh, interesting. That's what. Okay, don't say hey. Uh, Alright? Alright? And don't freak out because guess I'm gonna go for a little, little bit. Because here's the thing, because then here's the here's the follow-up. What did I do? No. Bro, it's not about you. That's the problem. That's, that's the whole issue there. It's not about you. Right? And so then you just keep digging. Alright, number two. Girls love to talk and to be They love to talk and be heard. As a result, because of what I was saying and how you're wired in the mind, that's spaghetti. Everything's connected to everything else. As a result, most women are in pursuit of connecting life together. They solve problems, but from a much different perspective than men. Women consistently sense the need to talk things through. In conversation, a woman can link together the logical, the emotional, the relational, and spiritual aspect of an issue. The links come to her naturally. So the conversation, a lot of the time, is effortless. And you're like, why is she still talking? I'm in my quiet box. It's like, she's processing, homie. Pay attention. Find a pay attention box, guys. The link... Okay, where are I? If she is able to connect all the issues yeah. together, listen, the answer to the question at hand bubbles to the surface and is readily acceptable. This is how they're wired. Great example for me is this. My wife. <laughs> she's an RN. She's a nurse. She will come home and she's had 12-hour shift. There's a lot that's happened in those 12 hours, right? I, I am watch, I'm in my TV box, and she'll walk in, and she, and eh, it's not her fault, it's my fault. Because I say, how did it go? How was your day? I just unlocked number two, okay? And what I mean by that is, it begins. She starts telling me, in detail. She's processing. And then, guess what happens? Because at times I don't shift to my listening box, I'm in my nothing box, or I'm in my TV box. She then, Tests the subject. <laughs> With what? What do you think? Did you hear what I said? Oh. Uh. Or she asks something about the thing, and I'm like, oh no, alert, 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 <laughs> right? And I'm in a mess, and it becomes a mess. And here's what I learned after 20 years this summer, amen, of marriage. Here's what I learned. play out the two mindsets right all of a sudden I was like okay I'm gonna listen and then I start giving her advice and she's like no you're not hearing me but and then it's turned into a thing why do you think she's processing and things will bubble, bubble to the top she just needs me to listen but in my box I'm trying to solve 
uh, solve her problem. I'm trying to give her the, the, the way forward. I'm trying to help her understand this is all you need to do. You just need to say that thing. You need to do this thing. She doesn't care about that. That's not how she's going to process. She just needs me to hear her out and once in a while respond right back to her that I am listening to her and that I am hearing the basic things. And that's okay. And that's fine. And we have, it took time. It took years for us to figure that out for us. It's like, oh, you don't want me to solve anything. And you're not even asking me to understand. Because she's the other thing. She's working in the medical field. She's saying things that I'm like, I don't even know what you're saying right now. Right? Medical words. What? It's like another language to me. And so I'm trying to like, honey, I don't understand those things. It's just like, oh, I don't need you to understand those things. I just need you to hear me. Because I'm processing. It's that a long day. And I was focused and working and working and working. And now I just need a minute. And those see the beautiful balance when both can come together? Because guess what, guys? Because we can have a listening box when we lean into that one, that's a gift for her. Because I can sit and say, babe, I'm all yours. Turn off the TV, hit me. How's your day? See? And now she can exercise how she's been wired and she can process. See how that works? See the beauty? That's just one example. All right, let's keep moving. Um, like I said, if men are usually the stronger sex physically, women are usually the weaker sex physically, but this is what I mean by that. This, again, actually naturally speaks into the want to be protected, provided for, and taken care of. Again, we live in a world that tells you the complete opposite. You don't need no man, do you, bro? Right? But the reality is, if we get to the core of who you are and how you're wired, you actually love that. You, you're gonna tell me if a Prince Charming kind of guy that you're into walks up to you and, and, and you know says that they're gonna care for you and protect you and be about you, or you're at school and somebody tries to mess with you or says something to you and he steps in and says, hey, excuse me, what are you doing? You're gonna be like, ah. <laughs> You know it's true. So if you want to fight that, fight that with your life group. But I'm just saying, it's true. But here's why. Because you allow a man to do this. Not because you can't do it yourself. You understand? So I'm not meaning to degrade you and say those things. I just believe that God designed this on purpose. There's some beauty there. Like I said earlier, if somebody walked through this place right now, God forbid to hurt us or try to attack us. Girls, instinctively, you're going to hope that someone stands in between you and the danger. And usually, that's a guy. And that's okay, is what I'm saying to you. That's all right. And guys, don't use that to abuse it. Instead, see it as a beautiful opportunity to protect and to love and to care and to create safe spaces and safe places for our women. Let's keep moving. You're a little more emotional driven, number four. For example, it's the thought that counts. Thank God that you are wired that way. Because sometimes my gifts stink for my wife. And she's able to say, whoa, 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 time out. But you thought about me. And you're like, yes, I did. I know that there's tape still on there ripping off of the thing, but thank you. There's something beautiful about that. But because you are emotional, you can make crazy emotional decisions. Let's talk about fights, for example. Guys will punch it out and then be like, okay, it's over, bye. Girls will figure out how to ruin your life. <laughs> you know how I know this is true? Ladies, if you were ever bullied, pushed around, talked about, or someone tried to physically harm you or hurt you in elementary or junior high, can you remember that girl's first and last name? <laughs> You're like, uh, yeah. And if not, it's in my journal. And I'll go for it. Right? And you will probably remember for the next 50 years of your life. That girl. Anna, whatever. You know, like. I hope she dies. 
think I'm kidding, but that emotional damage. Let's go, number five. You have a slower sexual drive. I talked about this already, like a light dimmer or a crock pot. This is not a bad thing. Trust me, this is a good thing. Guys, you're gonna be in so much trouble. And we were all wired the same. We are gonna talk about this more during the sex talk at the end of the series. Let's keep moving. You actually naturally want to be led. You want to be in a relationship, ladies. You want a man to stand up to you, for you, to protect you, like I, like I mentioned. Here's how that fractures sometimes. She wants to lead for whatever reason. She has been hurt in the past. It's all she has ever learned as a woman in our culture. You need to take control. You need no man, okay? Or how about this? You don't need a relationship. That's not a thing. You, you just protect your heart and treat guys now how guys treat girls. Hold them at arm's length and, and you get yours. Sadly, that's sometimes what our, wo- our world preaches, what our culture preaches. There's more, did you know, here's what's so crazy. In 2023, the latest study shows, there's more people today not wanting to be in any type of relationship, like, like actually solidified. And we're gonna talk about more what that means next week, but solidified, like we're a boyfriend and girlfriend more today than ever before, yet they still want to be hooking up. What? How twisted. We'll talk more about that as we move forward. Or how about this? Because again, you naturally want to be led. You naturally want to be in, in, in a relationship. You want to trust. You've also been cursed. Genesis 3.16 is very clear. Your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. You will want to be over the man constantly. We take those words and we get like, oh, that's very rigid in 2023, relax. It's like, I will walk more of that out here the next coming weeks, but I'm telling you, naturally it's gonna want to be your pull anyway, ladies. This is the brokenness that we live in. Another way that this actually fractures and comes back and bites you, ladies, is this. You're already stepping into the role when, when you're like, no, I'm the leader. I, I don't need nobody to lead me. I got this in this relationship. You start already stepping into the role of providing for him, which in fact, you're only crippling him. For example, you're not a believer. I'll lead him to Jesus. <laughs> We're gonna talk about more of that next week. Let's keep moving because I'm running out of time. Seven, you want to be loved. Men want to be loved too, like I said, and you want to be respected too, but, but primarily, love is, is, is at the top for you, ladies. Again, you know how I know this? Because every time you watch a movie where a father loves his children or loves his wife or cares for her, does not something special, you go, you go how? Aww. It's like I did my research. That's how it goes. But again, because of hurt or misuse of this gift or lack of feeling loved can lead a girl to attach themselves to anything that says, I love you. Or does something nice for you. <gasps> he must love me. No, he just let you get in line. Relax. <laughs> oh, he's going to marry you. No. No, 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 don't do it. Don't, don't. Relax. Calm down. Don't tell him that. You, or you quickly use, I love you, because you're so hungry for it that it's turned unhealthy. Ooh. Again, because of pain and hurt and decay and sin. And here's the last one. Pretty ladies, I'm gonna wrap up. You actually would love to be able to raise children. You would love to nurture. It's within you. But again, we live in a culture that says you don't need that. It's only if you want it. It's only when you want it. But actually, you've been designed in such a way that you want it. It's a part of you. It's in you. This world tells you that you should do both, actually. You should be the career woman, and you should run the whole household and raise the kids. I remember when I ran into this with my wife, and I couldn't realize why. We were praying and praying and praying, and we finally got to the spot where we're like, no, she should stay home. 
She should stop working, stay home. Shoot, if I gotta get a second job, we'll do that. But she kept having a hard time making that decision. And I couldn't tell why. And finally she broke out in tears in front of me and she said, Arnold, because we live in a world that tells me I should be able to do both. And if not, I'm less than a woman. Holy smokes, what? Babe, since when do we live by what the world tells us? God created you this way. It's okay to want that. And I want it for you. But let's make it happen. We'll figure it out. And we did. And it's been amazing. But she's been able to raise our boys the way we want her. We want us too as a family. Still with me? Sadly, the world has convinced you that you should never rely on a man to care for you fully. They should never fully depend on a man. And like I said, a lot of this is because, sadly, men, we fail. Or past men have failed. Generations of men have failed. And, 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 and I don't blame women. And there's a lot of fracture there. Like I said earlier, you choose to nurture a man instead. Oops. That's why you take the bad boy. You think you'll fix him. So your nurturing is already coming out. There it is. Let's just keep moving. That one. Yeah, yeah. Hit different. <laughs> but how about this? If you do stay home, you, you need to feel the stay at home mom identity of today. You got to be that perfect mom. White picket fans, perfect pictures, perfect Instagram, promoting a product on Instagram that they are sponsored by. <laughs> or, or have a blog. Or be good at arranging flowers or something. What world are we living in? But sadly, girls, that's the fracture. That's what you get pushed upon. Doesn't have to be that way. So here's where I'm gonna go with this. And I got 10 minutes to cover this. We'll see if it happens. Our culture has taken all of these things and the fractures within them and used them to their advantage. One way has been this way, desensitization. Think of all the things I said about how ladies you're wired and guys you're wired. Much of what's produced in our culture, movies, advertisement, music, is only feeding into the brokenness of these beautiful truths. The more we watch and listen, the more we believe the opposite of what's intended. And that's what breaks my heart and why I wanted to start here and pour this as a foundation. Some of the results in our culture are so heartbreaking. And I would argue that at the core, it's because we don't truly understand each other. And, le and if we don't do that, we definitely don't respect each other. Our culture, there's three results. There's many, but I'm just gonna hit you with three results. If you think I'm done, we're not done. Keep taking notes. Three results that I think our culture has done with these broken things. First one is modesty. Relax, relax, it's gonna be okay, watch this. First Corinthians 6, 19 through 20 says this. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own, you are bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. I actually wanna start with an apology because sadly that verse has been thrown in our faces, ladies, especially you in a harsh way. So I wanna start with an apology. Now, you're allowed to apologize for all people. Yep. <laughs> Girls, if you have ever, look at me. You just focus, look at me. Ladies, if you have ever worn something to group that maybe was deemed inappropriate or have felt shamed by a leader or a student, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's one thing to talk about grace and mercy in theory. It's another to know how to practice it. Sometimes individuals just don't know how. And sadly, it's at the expense of you. And for that, I apologize. And my hope is that you don't feel that here. Guys, 
You have been, I also want to want to send an apology your way. You have been made the monster when it comes to modesty. Girls cover up because guys are visual. Even if that's true, how those things are communicated could be so degrading and shameful. If you have ever felt like that, guys, I apologize to you too. You should not have to apologize for how God wired you. You should be educated and helped on how to handle that wiring. So two very different things. This whole just stop doing it. Stop thinking it. Stop doing that thing. Knock it off. That never works. It only brings shame and pain. That's all that does. And don't get me going on the gospel because they covered all those things already. So now you can live, truly live. And so now we can be curious about how we've been designed and curious about how we're wired and how we want to navigate that in our lives. And yes, you will fall. And yes, you will break. Those things will happen. But you're already those things. And Jesus said, you're okay. Because he died for you and he loves you and he came for you and he offers, him, offers you righteousness that only he can offer you. So enough with taking these beautiful things that God has created in us and using it against one another. Guys, that visual that God has given you is going to do wonders for you one day in your marriage. Ladies, your beauty is going to do wonders one day in your marriage. That's a beautiful thing. So I'm so sorry. I need to start there. If you've been shamed in any way, that is not the heart of Jesus. It's not how he works. There. So now we're going to talk about modesty. <laughs> Ladies, I'll start with you. Please hear my almost like fatherly, gentle heart when I say these things, please. Because that's how I mean them. I think today the modesty talk breaks down into two camps. Some girls. They do. They use their body to draw attention. They know they will get the likes, the views. But remember how we're wired. You we want to be loved. You want to be seen. You want to be known. So the attention by dressing a specific way can be an answer to those needs. How that adds to the fracture of the guy side, again, You've learned today how they're wired. They are very visual. So we, we can hurt each other in that space. And guys, we get in. And I say we. And feed off of a girl's immodesty sometimes. And as God calls us and we see how Jesus lived, to be a protector, a servant, in love by helping each other guard each other. You know what's one cool thing? I said this to my friend the other day. They know who they are. Ladies, I, 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 this is a thank you for you. For those of you who do this, when, or who do this, thank you. Thank you. Because to me, you're thinking about us. You're thinking about us. You look beautiful in that dress, yes. But sometimes, you gotta bend over to pick something up, <laughs> right? And so for you to do that, thank you. That to me shows that you, you, are, you are thinking outside. And that's, that's, a, that's a, I think that's a good thing. I think that's a healthy thing. It doesn't have to be a bad thing or a shameful thing. We don't need to look at it that way. We're learning, right? And so thank you for that. But these days, I also feel like there's a larger camp. See, more and more lately, we see a lot of young girls posting themselves in outfits that, let's say, leave less and less to the imagination. We could easily just be like, put clothes on. But honestly, I want to look at this. Let's just get curious here for a second. From talking to young women, I believe many of them are not necessarily doing it for the attention of a guy, but to show body positivity. 
confidence, to show it in order to love it. Meaning, I feel good in what I'm wearing. It makes me feel confident, so I'm going to post it. In a way to kind of protest, combat, or defeat body shaming of yourself or from others. If you have always been put down or you've put yourself down, specifically your looks or your body, you wearing a two-piece, feeling strong and affirming it by posting it can be a powerful feeling. It's true. The problem is, if not careful, we could be swinging the pendulum so far that we are still causing ourselves damage because we run the risk of exposing ourselves in a way that we're not meant to be exposed, that we're supposed to keep for an intimate relationship one day in marriage. Because here's my question. If that is true of you or something you wrestle with or something you see, where does the line of body positivity and self-love end and idolatry begin? It's just a question. At the end of the day, what is the purpose, the truth, to be more like Jesus, to lean on Jesus, to find our identity in Jesus? Listen, you are strong, you are worthy, you are beloved, you are lovely, all because of Jesus. To, uh, uh, he makes those things true in you. We need to see our bodies through the gospel, broken because of sin, but amazing because God created it and paid for it. Come on, he did. There is no need to expose yourself in these types of pictures, guys, and, uh, girls and guys, in order to prove anything to yourself or to anyone else or to feel a certain way. True, affirming, everlasting approval comes from Christ. You want to be seen, right? At the soul level, right? Guess what? He sees you. He sees you better than anyone will ever see you. That should be enough. And I know it's a daily battle. And it's a journey. So no, no more, we don't need to moralize this. It's just learning. How do we navigate this well? Guys, you're not a monster. We live out, out of our fractions. Our fractures, that happens, sin. So listen with truth and grace when I say this. Please. A lot of these ladies... They dress this way because we as men have said this is what we want. Maybe not exactly in those words, but with what we watch, what we deem acceptable, the small comments, man, she's hot, or that's hot, or check her out. If I could only get that girl like that. You think there's simple things and simple phrases, but man, our girls are very sharp and they hear those things. Before you know it, it's connected to everything else. And they start living out of that reality. And I'm taking time. Are you guys okay? Right here, right? I'm going to hit self esteem real quick. Self esteem is the next one. We got self esteem issues. I'll start with me. <laughs> Psalm 139, 13 through 14. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Guys, my boys, my kids, my, my two little boys are always wanting to wrestle me. All the time. Even now, when they're old. They want to challenge the alpha male in their life. Why? Because it's how God created them. Why? They want to know if they have what it takes. And sadly, for many of us men, did not have men in our lives who looked at us and said, as little boys, you have what it takes. You have what it takes. Come on. Let's go get it. Let's go wild. Let's go wrestle. Let's mess around. Let's figure it out. That's what we do with one another as guys all the time. 
right? I don't know how many camps I've gone to, and I go by a room, and a bunch of dudes are just wrestling each other. It's like, what are you doing, bro? Put your shirt back on. No, no, we gotta go. You wanna get in here? I'm like, no, I don't wanna get in there. First of all, lawsuit. Right? Second of all, what are you doing? You're sweaty and stinky and all the things. But, you know, I believe that we respond in two ways, guys, when we have self-esteem issues. Either we are just not going to ever attempt to pursue a girl's heart because we believe we are not worthy enough, which is led by fear, or we are going to be idiots and treat women like dirt because of whatever shortcomings you believe you have. Both are not good. We're just trying to show off to your buddies. And maybe you will get respect that way like I talked about earlier because you're conquering women, whatever the heck that means. But these are, these are pouring out of self-esteem issues that, that's, again, the fracture of our culture has produced into us, and then we, we, we live that out. And again, I'm so sorry if you haven't had a male in your life that would pour into you and say to you, hey, no, hold on, you don't need to live that way. That's, that's, that's not it. You can live differently. Girls, ladies, some of you hate yourself in the mirror. The fracture and the brokenness of, of, of the way that you've been wired, man, leads you to that. You can't help but compare yourself to all kinds of girls, magazines, Instagram, social media, TikTok, what the world tells you, what you should look like, what the boys say you should look like, etc. When you look in a mirror, you hate what you see. Or instead of loving who you are, you look for flaws. For some of you, it has led you to doing things you regret. It has you looking for love in all the wrong places. It has you convinced that you are not wanted or are incapable of being loved. Or even worse, that you shouldn't exist. Ouch. This is what a, what a, what a low self-esteem can do for you. This is, again, the fractures in what the world sometimes lead us into. And the last one is this. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. We started a little late. We'll learn next week. <laughs> pornography. You're like, what the heck? How are you into pornography in four minutes? Watch me. <laughs> Matthew 5.28 says, But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Jesus levels the playing field. Just a thought is enough. And this world has abused that. This is one of the worst results of not only misunderstanding each other, but abusing who we are. Guys and girls are struggling with this. First of all, it's, it's degrading everything that God created. Turned a woman into a piece of me. Turned men into awful leaders. Leading our women into brokenness, hurt, abuse, pain, darkness. Darkness. And leading men into disrespect, shame, secrecy, lying, and darkness. All things that we weren't made for. Yet we live there many times. Or we lean toward that. There's no no one wins with pornography. No one. No sex. No guy, no girl. No one wins. It literally degrades the very vision of who God created us to be. I've got so many of these statistics for you, it's out of control. I'll just give you a couple. Around 35% of all internet downloads are pornographic. 35%! That's insane. You know how much we use the internet all day, every day? That's a lot. The medium age of first exposure to pornography is now only 14 years old. As many as 93.2% of boys, 93%, and 62.1% of girls first see pornography before the age of 18. About 40 million American adults regularly visit pornography sites on the internet. Every second, more than 28,000 people are watching pornography on the internet. Every second. Nine out of 10 boys are exposed to pornography before the age of 18. Six out of 10 girls. The average age, sadly, on the younger end, that our boys exposed now is nine. Nine years old. This is taunting. These just are a few. You know how old I was? Five. 
five years old. My babysitters. It's one of the it's one of the earliest images I have as a child. I remember trying to trying to pull my hands to my eyes to cover my eyes because for some reason instinctively I knew something was wrong. And I remember my babies were just pulling my hands away from my face so that I would watch. Five years old. I have two little boys. If I knew that happened to them, I would fight. <laughs> here's, here's where I want to wrap this up. I say all these things, you guys, not to like just jolt you and freak you out. Because it's what we're living in. It's where we're at. We've been built a certain way. There's fractures in the sense of those things. But that doesn't mean there's no healing. There's always healing because of Christ, because of Jesus. There's healing in all these other areas. And I want to release you quickly now, here just a, a second into your groups, because, I, because some of you, I may have just opened a can of worms and now it's like, have fun. Okay, um, leaders, you can go a little long if you have to, especially if this gets real. Because here's some subjects I want you guys to discuss and to talk about, and we're gonna keep, this was just the tip of the iceberg, keep coming. In a minute, we're gonna put up um, where you're going for your small groups. If you don't have a small group, please, 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 come up to me, I will direct you. Katie's around somewhere, right in the back, she will direct you. Let's go talk about these things. I know why I opened a bag of worms, but let me pray for you, Jesus. I don't know what this did for anyone in this place, but I hope, God, that at the end of the day, they hear something clear. It's not about shame. Sometimes there's conviction, and that's okay. But if shame's leading the way, that is not of you, God. So I pray, God, as well, that as we dig into some of these conversations, may we understand and realize there is healing in the midst of these conversations. There's healing in the midst of these subjects because of what you did on the cross. We don't have to stay where we might be right now when it comes to these subjects. If we don't like it there, if we don't want to live there. God, I pray for boldness. I pray for um, good conversations in these life groups as we dig into these subjects. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.